This here is a CAN transceiver, where CAN stands for Controller Area Network, and is a type of serial communication. In previous videos we talked about the UART, I2C and SPI communications. And the Arduino Uno or Nano, for example, have all these types of serial ports. But it doesn't have a CAN bus. So what is CAN? How it works internally? Why it's better or worse than other types of serial communications? And why we use this type of serial data transfer for the entire automobile industry? We will check the signals, explain how they work and establish a CAN connection between an Arduino and an ESP32. So guys, let's get started. Hey guys, PCBWay is sponsoring this video and let me just tell about their services. For example, look how awesome their prototyping PCBs are. And you can get this for only $5. They are so professional and they will make your project work a lot better. And to order such PCBs, you only need a few minutes on their website, where you can select any configuration that you want for your boards. Along with that, you can also order the SMD stencil for soldering the components using solder paste. And you can also use their services for flexible PCBs and create some unique projects. And if you want to make your project start to finish, you can get the PCBs assembled together with the mold injected part or maybe 3D printed, metal parts or other CNC services, all with PCB way. What's up my friends, welcome back. It has been a while since I wanted to talk about CAN. My previous videos on I2C and SPI had a lot of viewers and it seems that you are interested into CAN communication as well, so let's get started. First of all, CAN stands for Controller Area Network. So as the name implies, it works well in a network, so we can have multiple devices connected together. That's why we use CAN communication for automotive applications, where we have a bunch of sensors, actuators, some lights, some screens and so on, all communicating together. CAN communication is a serial type communication. It has a bus topology, it is half duplex, asynchronous, differential signal level and amazing noise protection, so let's go step by step for all these features. Here I have a CAN signal that I've captured with my oscilloscope and we will see the Arduino example in just a moment. This kind of communication uses two pins and these are called CAN H for high and CAN L for low, as you can see on this module which is a CAN transceiver. So let's start with part number one, why is this a bus topology? Well first of all the CAN communication doesn't need a host or a so called master slave connection, where each device is connected to the master in a star configuration. With CAN all devices can send the data. So instead of having each device connected with a separate connection to a master device, we have a bus, basically the H and L lines, and then each device will connect its CAN pins to this bus. The CAN communication is a message based protocol based on an ID plus a message. So each device will send the data that it wants to send but also has to send an ID. All the other devices will receive the same message, but only the device with the given ID will act on it. In this way using only two wires we can create a communication between all the devices in a network, that's why this is called a controller area network. And because this is half duplex, only one device could use the bus and send the data at a time. Once the transfer is complete, the other device could respond and send its data. So for example in a car you want to have the temperature controller, the tire pressure sensor, the gasoline level sensor, the main music display, the radar sensor and so on, all connected to the CAN bus, communicating with each other. And in that way we can use a lot less wires, and we don't create a mess. But there is another thing why we use the CAN communication with cars. So for part number 2 is the noise level and the differential signal. To understand, in digital terms, usually the bits 0 and 1 are represented by a high or low voltage level, such as 0V and 5V for example, where the 0V represents a 0 and the 5V represents the 1 bit. But inside of the car there is a lot of electrical noise, vibrations from the motor, magnetic fields from the speakers, from outside the car and so on. 
so just imagine that the CAN bus is passing behind the music speaker for example. And that will create a lot of magnetic disturbance, which might induce a voltage over the signal, right? So let's imagine that this was a normal signal, and that induced voltage happens exactly on this bit, which was a zero. But now because of the noise magnetic induction, this bit voltage level was raised to let's say 4 volts or something like that, and on that level the receiver would interpret that as a 1 bit, right? And that would be an error. But with the CAN communication we don't use two levels of 0 and 5 volts, we use differential levels. That means that the receiver will always read the voltage difference between the H and the L signals, and interpret that as a bit. For example when H is low and L is high, the differential level will be 2.5 volts minus 2.5 volts, equal to 0, and that represents a 1 bit. But when H is high and L is low, we have 3.75 volts minus 1.25 volts equals to a voltage of 2.5 volts, and that represents a 0 bit. But now look what happens when we introduce the same magnetic noise as before. Let's say that this bit here is affected by the same noise level. But guess what? Because both wires were next to each other, both levels will be affected with the same amount. So let's say that the H goes from 3.75 volts to 5 volts, and the L goes from 1.25 volts to a voltage of 2.5 volts. So the differential value between the signals is still 2.5 volts, and we still interpret that as a zero bit so the data was not affected by the external noise. Pretty cool, right? That's why we get these shapes on the oscilloscope for differential level communication, where we don't read the signal voltage, but the voltage difference between two signals. Ok, so now for part number 3. CAN communication is asynchronous. That's the same as we have seen for the UART communication, and basically it means that the devices are not using the same shared clock source there is no clock pin, but all devices must agree on about rate. If one device is sending the data at a speed of 1 megabit per second, but the other devices are expecting a bit speed of 5 megabits per second, those devices can communicate between each other. So for the data frame, the signal starts with a start bit, so in that way the rest of the devices will be aware that new data is coming in. And then we have the ID bits, so we know to which device the data is sent. Then we have the control bit and the actual data, which could be from 0 to 8 bytes of data. Then we have the CRC bits, which we will talk about in a moment, and finally the end frame bits. Ok, so before we talk about the final step, which is the CRC, let's make an example using the Arduino. This here is a CAN transceiver module using the TGA1050 chip, and this needs an RX and TX input and it will create the differential signals on the H and L pins. But the Arduino Uno for example can directly control these RX and TX pins, because this is not a normal UR port, it needs a CAN controller. For example this other module has the same TGA1050 IC, but it also has this CAN controller chip, which is the MCP2515. This has an SPA communication, and it will automatically generate the TX signals, or to read the RX signals from the CAN transceiver. By the way, the Arduino DUE does have CAN controller pins, but I don't have a DUE right now. But the ESP32 also has CAN controller pins, so we could use that. So I will connect the module with the CAN controller to the Arduino Uno, and the CAN transceiver without the controller directly to the ESP32 as in this schematic. Then I connect the L and the H lines from one module to the other. In Arduino IDE we install this library that is called can.h, that you could download from below. In examples you have a code for a can sender or a can receiver. We upload the receiver code to the Arduino Uno. But for the ESP32 copy this code from below the video. As you can see we define the ESP32 pins 21 and 22 for TX and RX. And then we send 8 bytes, with the letters electron. Upload this code to the ESP32. Now I open the serial monitor and as you can see, the data from the ESP32 is sent and received by the Arduino Uno. 
we have successfully made a CAN communication. Check more about this example on electrons.com. And finally, to end this video, you must know that CAN has CRC implementation, standing for Cyclic Redundancy Check. So even if the differential level read fails, we can still check if the received data is good or not. Basically, you get the data that you want to send and calculate the CRC for that data using a formula, for example, these values. The receiver will get the data and the CRC and makes the inverse calculation of the CRC and also the CRC of the received data. If they are not the same, that means that the data had errors on the way. That's why the CAN communication is so secure against noise and is used in automobile for safety reasons. So guys, I hope that you now know how CAN communication works and how to implement one using Arduino or ESP32. For the code, the schematics, the modules that I've used and the libraries, check electrons.com for the full tutorial. Thanks again and see you later guys. Hey guys, so that was another project and I hope that you like it. As you all know, to buy all these modules, a huge help from you is from Patreon. So if you want to support me, you can support me there, but also just commenting below, giving me a like or sharing this video, it will also support my channel. So thank you very much to all my patrons and to you guys.